Hello and welcome to today's live lunch with Pastor, Associate Pastor Tony Gandula coming at you again here. Um, thank you for joining us and I will say hi to you as you log on if you um, post your name up there and I'll try not to give out your whole name. All right, so we're going to do a part two today. If you want to give to the ministry, I always try to get this information out there to everybody as we're waiting for people. But if you want to give to the ministry of my father's house, hi Hazel, you want to go ahead and hit the... Um, Shop Now button takes to the Donate Now button on mfhlv.com. Also, check out our webpage on our healing page at mfhlv.com. Hello, Angie. God bless you. Praise God. You are a blessing, Angie. Hallelujah. Thank God for you. Hi, Joyce Marie. See, I didn't say your last name. Anyway, as we're going on here, check out our healing page. Hey, Caitlin at mfhlv.com, and you will see manifestations of God's healing anointing happening there in the service. And we're believing God for these things, and it's happening. So, part two today on faith, hi Susan, fullness, the fullness of faith, or the word faithful and its fullness. Now, obviously we're talking about God's own faith fullness. And we're going to go ahead and go into this really quickly here. This is going to be out of the book of Hosea. Now, if you know anything about this book, it's almost like the books of the Bible just show the personality of God dealing with people and with nations. Understand something. When God deals with a person, people make up nations. God deals with nations. And there are nations now and there were nations back then. And that's why it's so awesome to look in the Bible and see how God deals not only with people and individuals, but with nations because he's the same God and he still deals with people, right? We're proof of that, right? Well, he's dealing with nations and it shows his faithfulness, his faithfulness because he is the faithful one. There's a beautiful scripture in the New Testament where God says that even if somebody was to deny him, he could not deny himself. <laughs> he is still God. He remains faithful. So in the book of Hosea, it is a very fascinating, interesting book. And it's using the ministry of God's gift of the prophet. There are prophets in the Old Testament and there's the prophetic gift, and there are prophets in the New Testament. And now, today, because the Bible is God's word, and God's word, his promises are forever, and from everlasting to everlasting. But this particular prophet, not everybody does this, right? But they were particular people that were special and are special to the, to the heart of God. And I want to just jump into this by saying this prophet was called of God to marry a prostitute because God wanted a man to experience what he was experiencing with his people. Now, that's the background of it. You can check out the book of Hosea to find out more about the heart of this because I'm just giving you like the bottom line to it. But here is this prophet who is in love with a woman who is a prostitute and he marries her and he wants her to quit being a prostitute and to love him for who he is. And we see this poetic gesture from God in dealing with his people who had walked away from him and gone after other gods. How faithful is God? He'll go after you. He'll go after you. That's how faithful he is. He will go after this nation. Because this nation was betrothed to the Lord and he's not gonna abandon her. He'll go after her. So let's check out Hosea chapter two, verse 16. This is part two. I'm gonna try to knock it all out here. So we're gonna run. Ready? Hosea two sixteen. And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that you shall call me Ishi, which means husband, and shall no more call me Bali, which means 
my Lord. Now understand in the next verse what he means by saying, no longer call me my Lord. They are a nation that was given to idolatry, which is harlotry to the Lord. You're going away from him when you go into idolatry and you trust in idols. Remember we said, Psalm 37, three, trust in the Lord, do good, so shall you dwell in the land, so shall you be fed. So what does he want them to call him? Look at the faithfulness of God. You will call me at that day, my husband. Look at the desire for relationship and the type of relationship that God desires. Verse 17, for I will take, and you should call me Ishi, my husband, and no more call me Bali, my Lord. Verse 17, for I will take away the names of Balaam or Baal out of her mouth. They shall no more be remembered by their name. Another version, the Berean Bible, study Bible says, I will remove from her lips the names of the Baals. Those are the false gods, the idols of the land. No longer will their names be invoked. Won't come out of her mouth anymore. She's gonna call my name and my name isn't gonna be another God. It's gonna be my husband. Verse 18. Now this is very important. So I wanna cover it, but I'm gonna cover it quickly because I wanna be in the, our time frame. And, I, and that day, I will, will I make a covenant for them? I'm, look how faithful God is. I'm going to do this for you. I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field, with the fowls of heaven, with the creeping things of the earth, of the ground, and I will break the bow and the sword and battle out of the earth, and I will make them to lie down safely. In other words, this is my wife, this is my spouse, Spouse, I'm making a covenant with her and the land. With her and where she lives and how she's going to be fed. Remember we, remember Psalm 37, 3. Trust the Lord, do good. So shall thou dwell in the land and so shall thou be fed. You will find and have a place with God. And it's a place of relationship where he is as a husband taking care of his spouse, his wife, male to female. Verse 19, and I will betroth thee unto me forever. That is a picture of the faithfulness of God. I will betroth you unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee or marry you or engage you unto me in righteousness in judgment, in loving kindness, and in mercies. Now understand, once again, this was a unfaithful person. This was a prostitute. This was somebody who was not faithful in their heart. Ever been there? I know I have. This is faithfulness marrying, betrothing themselves to unfaithfulness. That's how faithful God is. Hey, Jerome, that's how full he is. That's how, that's how much he'll go after us. That's the fullness of really faith. Verse 20, and I will betroth, I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness. That's the fullness of faith. Relationship with God. And check this out. And thou shalt know the Lord. You'll know me. One of the meanings for that is you'll know me by experience. Who knows somebody better than a husband or wife? and a wife, a husband. Verse 21 and verse 22. Remember we talked about him saying, I will make a covenant for them with the, with the earth and the creeping things, the, the field, and it names all the birds of the heaven, and it names even battles that they'll have to deal with in life. 
Verse 21, it shall come to pass at that day. This is awesome. I will hear, saith the Lord. I will hear the heavens and they shall hear the earth. Now, you'll get this as we get to the next verse. And the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil and they shall hear Jezreel. Let me break it down. And it's come to pass in that day, I will, by, by the grace of God, I'm, I'm giving you understanding. It's not me, it's the Lord giving us understanding, all right? Verse 21, it shall come to pass in that day, I will hear, saith the Lord. It's another word of saying, I will answer. I will hear the heavens and they shall hear the earth. Earth and heaven are talking to one another. They are in relationship. There's no broken communion here. Earth and heaven are answering one another. And look how it affects things. And the earth shall hear the corn. The, the corn and the wine and the oil, they all answer, and they shall hear Jezreel, which is a word that means God is sowing. God said, I will make this covenant for them. And I am hearing from heaven, and the earth and I are in communication, and we're answering one another, and they shall hear that God sows. He creates. He is the faithful one. We're in responding to him, and we're in relationship with him. Last verse, verse 23. And I will sow unto her, unto, I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that has not obtained mercy. She didn't know mercy. Gomer represents the unfaithful. They did not know. And they don't know mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, you are my people. And they shall say, you are my God. That's how faithful God is. Where he takes out of us calling on false things and he puts in us a relationship with him. He's faithful to us as people and he's faithful to our nation. And I'm talking about America. The Bible says that mercy endures forever. It'll endure past judgment. Any affliction or any disease or any illness. Mercy endures forever. I just worship you, Lord God, right now for your faithfulness. For your loving kindness and your mercy that endures, that outlasts any affliction, any judgment. We pray that over our nation, O oh God, over our hearts and our families this day in Jesus' name. Jesus loves you. His mercy is being poured out toward us and our nation. Our job is to receive it. As believers, our job is to believe it and pray it and speak it over other people that their hearts would turn and our nation's heart would turn to the Lord. Those in rebellion, those who don't know what it is to be faithful, they haven't experienced that before. But faithfulness will go after them. So Lord, we thank you. If you don't know Jesus, you just have to surrender to somebody who loves you so much, he's going after you. We love you, God bless your day, and thank you for sharing this time with us. Let the oppressed know peace. A kiss to the king.